The Web 3.0 industry is dead. There's no more blockchain developer jobs. But what's going to happen to my career now that the crypto market is down? These are the kinds of things I hear all the time, particularly in the middle of this crypto bear market that we're in right now. And understandably so. You know, right now is a really uncertain time for the whole world, not just the Web 3.0 industry. The broader economy is arguably in the middle of a global recession right now. But given all this fear and uncertainty, what's the actual truth about the Web 3.0 job market right now? Have things changed? You know, is now actually a good time to become a blockchain developer? Well, I'm going to give you the truth in this video as a blockchain developer myself who's been in this space for a very long time, worked through multiple bear markets now, and it's helped lots of other people land their first Web 3.0 job, rain or shine. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have a master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about the truth about the Web 3.0 job market. So one of the reasons I'm making this video is I've been personally talking to a lot of aspiring Web 3.0 developers lately, and I've had these types of questions come out a lot. So I wanted to you know, make a video for you all because I imagine they're not the only ones that have these questions, and it's you know understandable. And I really want to address the elephant in the room, you know, because the crypto markets are down, you know, crypto prices are down, sentiment's bad, the economy's in the tank. And so a lot of times when people ask about this, they want to like look at data and statistics that, you know, try to measure what it's like. But having been in this space for so long, like, I don't rely too much on data and statistics to do this, but I'm going to put some of those together and show you those in this video because it's really hard to measure and you kind of have to just look at different data points to sort of give you a sanity check on what your intuition really tells you by, you know, being in the space for a long time, having the experience and being able to determine what's signal and what's noise. So let's jump in and look at a couple of those things. So one statistic that I like to look at is developer activity, okay? And I'm going to look at historical data based on this to see what happened in the past and try to forecast that in the future because I think the underlying behavior is actually really similar. So basically, the data shows that whenever crypto prices go up like crazy, it attracts a lot of new people in the space, uh, particularly developers. But unlike new investors who come in the space and lose all their money and leave, uh, a good majority of the developers who come into the space are actually sticky and stay uh, regardless of crypto prices going down. And that's not all new developers. Sometimes that's new talent, you know, working on new projects that are shipping for the next wave of things. And then whenever prices boom again, it attracts a new wave and then those are sticky and they get retained for the long term. So, um, you know, if you, you might have experienced that yourself. Like if you're a developer, you might have had your attention caught by crypto. You get in the rabbit hole, you get into the technology and like, wow, this is awesome. And you stay even when the price goes down. That happened to me. I got into crypto in 2017 when prices went up like crazy. And then despite the bust, I stuck around. And so you can look at this uh, report here put out by Electric Capital. Uh, this is looking at the past, all right? But you can see this like in 2017, here's what happened to the crypto prices that had a lot of developers come into the space and they continued to flock into this space even as prices were going down. And in the depths of the bear market, uh, it was really flat and a slight increase. And that continued and made new all-time highs whenever we had the network peak or excuse me, the price peak uh, in early, you know, 2021. So that electric capital report was published last year, and I was mostly doing that to show what happened in the past, and how that's likely to happen in the future. If you look at some recent data, you can actually look at uh, Alchemy. Uh, they put out a developer report for Q3 2022, so that's super up-to-date, okay? And we look at other developer statistics have increased like crazy, even despite the bear trend uh, in 2022. You can use proxies like weekly downloads for... Uh, things like Web3.js, Ether.js, really popular blockchain developer libraries have continued to rise uh, despite either throughout the year and is even going parabolic, okay, uh, despite, uh, you know, the recent downturn that we've seen. Other things like monthly verified contracts on Etherscan have consistently gone up month over month in 2022, okay. So these are pretty good proxies for people who are actually building things in Web 3.0. Now, some of these could be hobbyist developers, but the assumption here is that quite a bit of them are actually, you know, building real projects that are getting shipped. And some of these people, of course, might be building for their own, you know, sake, but it's still a good proxy for demand, and that demand generates companies, and companies hire blockchain developers to pull this off. So in a way, it shows that demand for the tech hasn't really changed, which trickles back down to developer demand. And because that demand trickles back down to developer demand, you can just start at the top and see, like, where, where's the money going, okay? You know, follow the money, that's going to show you where demand is, and that will ultimately trickle back down to blockchain developers. And even in the middle of this, you know, terrible bear market, you know, Uniswap, one of the most popular decentralized applications out there, uh, just raised $165 million in venture capital funding at a $1.66 billion valuation, even though 
you know, so many companies have had their valuations downgraded <laughs> despite the recent stock market downturn too, okay? Um, you know, we're still injecting massive amounts of capital. I mean, $165 million. Think about how many developer salaries that can pay for, you know, decades. That's a pretty good proxy for blockchain developer demand as well. And so some other data points that you can actually use are just looking at open roles on, you know, any job posting website, but particularly, you know, crypto specific jobs. So I'm just going to pull up a couple sites here like cryptojoblist.com, uh, web3.career. Okay, you can use some top line stats like 26,636 open jobs in Web3 at 3,221 companies. Okay. So you're telling me like if you went out and, you know, uh, you know, put your time in that you couldn't find at least one person to pay you for your skills out of this entire pool. And this is just on one site, right? Not to mention all the people who haven't listed jobs on this and not to mention the amount of jobs uh, that aren't listed on this by the same companies. Because, you know, if you see here, let's look at these stats, right? Like, uh, you know, 7,848 jobs across, you know, 2,109 companies. A lot of times people are going to pay for these sites and they're going to pay to advertise senior talent because that's what they need, but they would probably hire more people. It's just they're not going to pay to post those things, okay? If they can get more people coming in from the same funnel, and that's the amount that reduces the amount of cost of things they have to advertise. So you could easily multiply these numbers by way more than what you see here. And so now, of course, not all of these are blockchain developer jobs, okay? Um, you know, there's other types of jobs listed here, but you can just quickly browse through here and see you know, things like you know, blockchain developer, um, you know, Python developer, lead solidity engineer, um, you know, web three engineer. Like you just look at the job descriptions, you're gonna see lots of examples of, you know, the exact skills that I teach you on this channel uh, and lots of open roles, those types of things. So it's a pretty good data point. And now onto my favorite data point that really has no statistical significance in an aggregate sense, okay? But I use it all the time to sort of, you know, calibrate my own uh, understanding of the space, which is anecdotal evidence or my own experience, okay? So I get multiple inquiries every single week, uh, you know, for people looking for Web 3.0 developers, either trying to hire me, okay, or trying to hire, you know, people that I know. So those really haven't significantly slowed down, even though the crypto market has, you know, gone down. And also I get, you know, testimonials on a weekly basis uh, from you all saying like, hey, thank you so much. Like I landed my first blockchain developer job, you know, doing exactly what you told me to do. And those haven't significantly changed either. All right. So now let's talk about the fear of the what's going on in the broader economy with layoffs. Okay. We see this happen in, you know, big tech. We see it happen in other aspects of the tech industry, not just the web 3.0 industry. Okay. So are we seeing layoffs? Are we seeing hiring freezes? So we are seeing this still, you know, at companies that might have overhired in 2021, okay? But that's not necessarily what's happening everywhere, okay? So, I mean, you can see any of the previous data points that I referenced to, you know, validate this. And the truth is because you might be seeing layoffs or hiring freezes at certain companies, doesn't mean that's materially changed, you know, the aggregate demand for blockchain developers. And that's kind of the point I'm really trying to drive home here. So essentially, you know, the, the bottom line is, is the space as white hot as it was in October or November of 2021 compared to a year later at the time of recording this video? It's not as white hot as it was. But with that subsiding demand, has that materially affected the opportunity for you to change your career and become a blockchain developer? In an aggregate sense, you know, the short answer is no, it is not. And you can use pretty much all the evidence that I've placed for in this video uh, to kind of, you know, help you understand that. And one final thing I'll say about this, you know, speaking from my own experience is, you know, like I said before, I got in this space in 2017. I've been through multiple crypto downturns now, you know, worked through all of that time, okay? And what I'll say is right now is totally different from 2018 and 2019, okay? I mean, you can never really compare two periods in history equally, but you can look for analogies, all right? And, you know, when, when I was here through that entire time, the big difference is, you know, people were scared that crypto was going away in 2018, 2019 versus now. There's no real question of is crypto going to go away? It's just like, when's this thing going to kind of come back again? That's that's the overwhelming assumption that I get right now. OK, so, you know, during that time when everybody's worried about is crypto going to go away, all we had were like tokens. All we had were ICOs. ICOs were clearly dying. OK, DeFi was just an idea in people's heads. It wasn't a term that was disseminated yet. We had NFTs, but nobody really had used them, they hadn't seen a boom. But all of that time, I was still, you know, working as a blockchain developer, seeing lots of people try things and hire developers, very experimental time. But now we have a lot more use cases that we can coalesce around, a lot more capital, you know, in the space. And that's trickling down to developer adoption. And trust me, 
You, it's way better to be a blockchain developer now in 2022 than it was in 2018. All right, so that's an overview of the state of the blockchain developer market right now. So, you know, the bottom line is, uh, you know, is the space as white hot as it was one year ago? It's not as white hot as it was one year ago. Has that materially a ch changed the opportunity for you in an aggregate sense for a as a blockchain developer? It really hasn't. Okay, now is still a great time to break into the industry. You, know, you can look at every single data point in this video from developer activity to venture capital funding to open roles, all that type of stuff. Try to get a sense of that. But then today, I also just use my personal anecdotal evidence and experience and sort of the ear to the ground approach to navigate the current you know space. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you you know resonate with what I said today and you're just like ready to go for the throat and break into the blockchain industry, like I said, now is still a good time. You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those, you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you'll take a master's workout entirely. You know, I can show you how to land your first blockchain job, become a blockchain developer step-by-step -step over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.